So if you've ever used OceanWP and you wonder how fast actually is it in use, today we're going to benchmark it and find out. So we recently took the Hello theme for WordPress for a test drive. We wanted to find out how fast it was in real world environments. So we tested it with just the theme installed, with Elementor installed, we created a simple page setup with a header, footer and some content inside Elementor Pro. And finally, we added in an optimization plugin to get the best out of both the server setup and the theme. If you want to check out the results of that, you can take a look at the link in the corner right now. I also put a link in the description below. Well, today we're going to recreate those tests with Ocean WP, a theme that I've been using in my own projects for a couple of years now. So I wanted to see exactly how it would stack up against Hello Theme. Well, my name is Paul C. This is WP Touch, the channel where I help you create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking that bell icon below to become part of the WP crew and be notified every time new content is added. Okay, so let's just jump over into the dashboard of WordPress now, install Ocean WP and start those tests. So first thing we're going to do is go through and install Ocean WP. So if we jump over to the dashboard, you can see we currently have a clean install of WordPress. We take a look at the appearance section and come into themes. You find all we have in there is the 2019 theme, which we will remove in a moment once we've downloaded Ocean WP. Now I want to give a quick disclaimer before I start this test. This is based upon the server setup that I'm using. If you're using a different host in a different environment, your results will vary differently. But this should give you a good example when you compare it to all of the different themes we're testing in this series, how they compare to each other. Okay, so let's go ahead and add in our new theme. So we're going to click Add New, come over to Search for Themes, and we're going to look for Ocean WP. We'll download the latest version of that and install it. Now, normally, obviously, you would go through the process of using a child theme, but that doesn't really have any major impact upon the speed of the actual parent theme you're using. So for this example, we're going to leave it with just the theme installed. We'll activate that, and the next thing it's going to do is ask us to install some plugins. Now, we're only going to install one plugin, and we're installing this because by default, you are going to install this with Ocean WP itself because it adds additional functionality to the actual theme itself and opens up all the things you can do in the customizer. So with that being said, we just need to install Ocean Extra. We won't install Elementor at this point, and we won't, through this entire process, install WP Forms. Let's install Ocean Extra. Once we've done that, we are then pretty much good to go through. So you can see we now return to the required plugins. We can leave those as they are. We're going to skip the setup. I don't want to do any of that. I just want a completely vanilla copy of Ocean WP setup. Okay, so we're now ready to do our first series of tests. We're going to be using two online resources for this, so we match in with all the other tests we do. We're going to use Pingdom. We're going to use that to benchmark the speed of it, and we're also going to be using GT Metrics. So let's start off with Pingdom. First thing we're going to do is put in the domain that I'm currently using to test this out. Once we put that in, I'm going to set test the local servers to me. I'm based in the UK, so I'm going to choose the European ones. This is going to give me the best example of being closest to my servers and should give me a real world example of how fast this is on my server in my country. Now, let's just click on start test and let it run through and do the initial tests. Now, it's telling us we're in a queue, so we don't worry about that. So I'll just pause the video now and come back when the results are in. And there we go. There's our initial results. You can see we've got a performance grade of 91, which is a pretty good starting point page size which is just over 260 kilobytes and we've got a load time of roughly 607 milliseconds with 20 requests that's the first time we're going to run this two more times to give us a mean average and give us a good idea of an average based upon multiple different tests so let's just run that test a second time i'll pause the video do two more tests and we'll take a look at them moving up to gt metrics and see the initial results we get with that okay so i've gone over to gt metrics and i've logged in now at the moment, this is using the browser Chrome and set to Vancouver, Canada. So again, I want to change that over now to be the local to me, which is going to be London, UK. Everything else we're going to leave as is, and we're just going to hit analyze on there. And we're going to get our initial results then then on GT metrics, and we'll use that as the basis for our tests. And there we go. There's our test straight out of the box. You can see we're getting a page speed of 98%, which is very good. We're getting a Y slow of 87%. Now, this is one of the reasons we're going to get this is if we jump up to the Y slow tab, you'll see we're not using a CDN, a content delivery network. So we are going to be scored down a little bit on that under the Y slow setting. Obviously, it's recommended to use a CDN. If you don't have access to that, then you are going to get a slightly slower score on that. You see we've got a fully loaded time of just under one second and the total page size is pretty consistent with Pingdom at around 260-270 kilobytes and again the same number of requests. 
What I'm going to do now is I'm going to note that down. I'm going to run this two more times, and then I'll come back with the actual average based upon Pingdom and the actual results we get in GT Metrics before we move on and install Elemental Pro. Okay, so my initial results are in where we've got just the base theme installed. On Pingdom, we're getting just under 600 milliseconds across that mean average. On GT Metrics, we're getting just under one second. So there is a bit of a difference between the two, but like I say, if we had a CDN install, I'm sure that would change the actual results. But that's the base score that we're working from before we add anything else into the equation. So the next thing I'm going to do is jump over now, back into the dashboard, install Elementor Pro, just having that installed, no pages, nothing being created with it, just to give us a starting point. Then we're going to benchmark again and see what impact Elementor Pro has on the base theme. Okay, we're back in the dashboard now, and as you can see, we've got Elementor, Elementor Pro, and just the Ocean Extra plugin all set up. So we're going to run those tests again now where we don't have any actual pages created. We've just got the plugin installed. That's it. So let's just jump back over to Pingdown. We're just going to refresh this, come back up and start a new copy of this. We're going to come in and we're just going to put in our details and run that on our local setup. So let's start that test again. Let that run through and see what we come back with now as our base results. And there we go, there's our results. And what you can see is consistent with the last test we did with the hello theme, nothing when you install Elementor is loaded into the site. So you can see we're getting exactly the same results, same page size, same number of requests. Everything is exactly the same as it was prior to installing Elementor and Elementor Pro. So this is great to know that if you're creating sites with Elementor and you don't actually put Elemental content onto the page, you're not going to have any impact based upon Elemental just being installed. So let's run those tests again, then we jump over to GT Metrics, run our initial tests on there and see what the result is on that as well. So we're into GT Metrics again now, and we're on a clean copy of this. So let's just set that back to be UK and we'll analyze for the first time now with Elementor installed. And we should see the same results on here. You'll see a slight fluctuation, obviously, because of the server speed going back and forth. There will be a slight difference. But we should see that the file size and the number of requests and so on are identical to what we saw prior to installing Elementor and Elementor Pro. So there we go. You can see page size, number of requests, all exactly the same, just a slight difference in the actual fully loaded time. We'll run those tests two more times, and I'll come back with the results then when we've got Elementor installed. Okay, so a quick result test now after doing the GT Metrics and Pingdom. We've got just over 600 milliseconds with Elemental Pro installed on Pingdom and just over 750 milliseconds as an average in GT Metrics. So pretty good, like I say, consistent with what we're seeing in the first one. Let's just move on now. We'll create a simple Elemental page with a header and a footer and some basic content. The same content as I used in the previous example. We tested the Hello theme just so we get consistency. Then we'll come back and we'll take a look at benchmarking those and see what we get as a result. So this is the page that we're working with, which is exactly the same as I created for the Hello test. As you can see, we've got the header, footer and a basic page information, some navigation, a logo, normal things you see on a site. So now we've got that set up. Let's run through and test that first of all on Pingdom and see what kind of change that makes to the results. Let's start our test on there. Let's just run through and we'll take a look at the first results. And there's our initial results. As you can see, we've now got a bit of a performance hit based upon that content. Now, obviously, this is going to be down to the amount of images and content you have on a page. But like I say, we are keeping the same exact page structure, the same template between each of these tests. So we know that we've got a consistent result across the board. As you can see now, our page size has increased, including our load time and the number of requests. So our performance grade has gone down a little bit. So let me run these through two more times and then we'll jump on the GT metrics and take a look at the results on there. So with the GT metrics now, everything is set up and we'll just analyze the page on here and see what result we get with the new updated content to our site. So we can see that the GT Metrics initial score is very similar to what we saw in Pingdom. We're getting a fully loaded time of around the three second mark. Total page size is just under 700 kilobytes and 53 requests. So that's pretty good. We're seeing consistency. So we'll run these tests now a couple more times. I'll come back with the results and we'll see what we're getting now with some actual physical content loaded in. Okay, so results are in now from GT Metrics and also from Pingdom, and we are hitting around the three second mark consistently across both of those tests. So there is quite an impact with the speed based upon the content that's been added in. But like I say, you could take a look at optimizing images, reducing images and so on just to get that down and also take a look at a content delivery network. So now we've taken a look at this with just raw server setup. How about we take a look at the next setup, which is going through and seeing if the server caching on my particular setup makes any difference. And then finally, we'll take a look at auto optimize, a third party caching plugin that can 
really make quite a big difference depending upon the setup that you have. So let's just jump over to the server setup and take a look what we have there and see if that makes any difference whatsoever. Now my particular host uses cPanel for their actual access to my hosting account. And if we scroll through, I've got the option for optimized website. And what this allows us to do is to compress actual content. We've got three simple settings in there. We can disable it like you can see it currently is. We can compress all content, so it doesn't really care what type of content. It'll just try to compress everything. Or finally, we can choose exactly what file types we want to actually optimize. So we may only want to optimize images and HTML and CSS files. Well, you can do that here. For the sake of simplicity and consistency based upon all the tests, we're simply going to choose compress all content and update our settings. That's now optimized everything on our server. And if it makes any difference, we'll see that now when we start to test it through again through our online testing platforms. As always, we'll kick this off with Pingdom. We'll run our test on there and see what the results are. Bearing in mind around three seconds was the mean average on the previous test before we enabled this kind of server side caching. So we're looking to beat that hopefully with our tests. And the initial test comes in and as you can see it's pretty much exactly the same as it was just a little over three seconds same number of requests performance grade and page size and so on i'll run those another two times but we'll jump over to gt metrics now and take a look and we'll see if there's any changes in there okay let's run the test now in gt metrics and see if that shows any differences or whether we're going to see pretty much exactly the same result as we saw originally around that three second mark and as we can see from the results we are pretty much getting around that three second mark a a little slower, but you do expect to see some fluctuations in the results. But I will run these two more times on both Pingdom and GT Metrics to see if we get consistency across the board. But then we'll jump on and take a look at Auto Optimize. So as I thought, once we've done those tests, we're getting pretty much around the three second mark. Pingdom a tiny bit under, GT Metrics a tiny bit over. So I'm going to disable that caching now on the server level. We'll install Auto Optimize into the dashboard. We'll just set up the basics in there. Now there are obviously the more things you can do to tweak things if you want to. We'll set up the basics and we'll run a retest on there and see what difference that makes to the overall speed that we get out of Ocean WP with this nice simple setup. So I've gone ahead and installed and activated Auto Optimize. We're now ready to go through and set up the basics. So let's just jump over to the settings panel and into auto optimize. Now, obviously there are a lot of things you can do. You could go with the advanced settings, but a lot of users are simply going to just enable something like this and just keep the basics. We're going to stick to that. If you want to get in and get into more advanced functions, you can do, but let's just keep this simple. And like I say, consistent. So we'll optimize the HTML, the JavaScript and the CSS. We'll just save the changes on there and empty the cache. Then we'll jump into the extra section. We're going to leave the Google fonts as they are. And again, we're going to optimize the images. We'll leave that as is because we don't want to do that. We will remove the emojis and we will remove query strings. So this is a really down and dirty, simple, basic auto optimize install. So we've done that. So let's just jump over to Pingdom now and let's start benchmarking this with auto optimize enabled with its most basic settings. Let's hit that start test and let's see what results we're going to get now with auto optimize and see if it makes a big difference to what OceanW put, puts out with a simple copy of auto optimize installed. And there we go, the results are in. And as you can see, it's made quite a considerable difference. Our performance grade has gone up to 91. Our load time has come down to just over 1.2 seconds and our requests are basically halved. So I think that's really, really good starting point. So let's just jump over to GT Metrics now and run the same test on there and see what result we get back. Okay, let's hit analyze and let that run through now and see what results that comes back with, with auto optimize installed. There we go, there's the results on GT metrics, we're getting a fully loaded time of two seconds and a page size of just under 700 kilobytes, but those requests are down to 26 as well. So we've got a nice little speed increase there. So let's run through these tests two more times, get our average and see what result we get. Okay, so those final results are in now with OceanWP installed, Elemental Pro installed, an Elemental Pro based page with a couple of templates, server side cache disabled and auto optimized with its most basic settings. And we're coming back with Pingdom gives us a result of 1.22 seconds and GT metrics a result of 1.7 seconds. Now these are averages based upon three different results for each one. But I think that's quite a considerable difference. If you consider without auto optimize, we were getting around the three seconds mark. We've shaved off 
50 to 60, maybe even 70% based upon which of these metrics we're actually running it against. So if you are using Ocean MDP, it's definitely worth taking a look at using Auto Optimize with it. But hopefully what you'll see is that using Auto Optimize with it makes a great platform start, to start building your WordPress based websites out. If you want to check out how this compares to the Hello theme, I'd recommend taking a look at that video. I'll put a link in the description below and up in the corner now so you can take a look at that. Next, we're going to be taking a look at Astra. We're going to be benchmarking that in exactly the same way and see how that stacks up against Hello and Ocean WP. So stick around. That'll be your next week. So if you are interested, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be notified as soon as that video is released. So there we go. The results for Ocean WP are in. How do you think it stacked up against the Hello theme that we covered previously? Did you think it fared pretty well? Were you surprised or shocked by the results or were they kind of pretty much what you expected from Ocean WP? I'd love to get your feedback on this and the tests in the comment section below. So anything you'd like to say about this video, or anything covered in it, drop this in the comment section. Let's get that conversation started. Now speak in the comment section, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. That's perfectly fine. But let me know in that comment section what you did or didn't like about the video. Helps me create better content for you moving forward. Well, as always, all the applicable links for everything covered in this video and everything we cover on the channel are in the description below. So you can check that out there. As always, my name has been Paul C. This has been WP Tetson. Until next time, take care.